video. Oh, you got them? Video? Video. Okay, you're right. Tell me when you're ready. We're going. We're rolling. You're shooting? Yes, sir. Nothing can stop the Army Air Force. Well, fuel. Fuel will stop this bunch. Uh, some of the history behind it. This is a B-47. This is a Bomber. It's, it was the largest airplane that one pilot was allowed to fly in that war. It was a big airplane. Uh, on the, the background of this, there were nine B-47Ds heading north of their base in Biak, which is a ways over to the uh, northeast. They became lost. In those days, airplanes did not have any electronics. They had a radio direction finder. They had to listen for a tone, and that was it. Uh, it was a very cloudy day. They got lost, and they, but they all stayed together, which was smart. And the fuel began to run out because this is still about by air in those days, about an hour and a half from VA. So they decided they had to ditch in the ocean. And as a solo complete flight, except for the leader who was shot up and he was on fire, they all came down and they ditched right in this area. The leader, the remains of his airplane, where it was the island is, it's over here in the shallows in about oh, five or six feet of water. Uh, the, the seven aircraft all tipped together in the ocean in a formation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where the buoy is and where your dive is is the most shallow of the seven airplanes. The next one is 100 feet down, another 125 feet down, and so on. It'd be tech diving, which only Dave is qualified to do. And he has no trimix with him, so he can't do that. On plane number two, the parachute is still in the seat. And the white silk is hanging out. You can come back with a little souvenir. The airplane is upside down. Uh, the propeller on the front, as Anne reminded me, is a large four-bladed propeller. It was a Hamilton Standard R3360 engine, 32 cylinders, the biggest and most powerful engine that they had at that time. They needed it to get this thing off, off the ground. When it hit somewhere, when it was going down, it turned upside down. It's laying as this sketch shows. The machine guns are stainless steel. You'll find them out there just in good condition as they were then. Parts of the wing are uh, cracked off. On this side, remember it's upside down, there's a lot of coral growth on this wing tip here. This one is sticking up and there's still coral. The propeller is about 72 feet down. The tip of the tail is 102 feet. If you go back to the tail, look under the stabilizer, you will still see the red primer paint and no coral growth after 65 years. The ocean does strange things. A few years ago, when I was down here, uh, we took a uh, pickaxe and crowbars and we opened a hole in the sand under the cockpit. You can get up in the cockpit. Remember, it's upside down. I've been in and out of there three or four times, and you might as well do it if you want to. Just come in, it's under the wing, go up in there slowly so you don't pick up any of the stuff on the sand, and then have a look around. You'll see what used to be at the instrument panel here, and unusually on the P-47D, they didn't have enough room in the cockpit to put all the instruments, so right up by the pilot's head on the back side, on this side and left side, be right as you look at it, is another instrument panel sitting right up here. And then come out and then go up. The slope going up is just a slope going up to the surface. You can go up there, there's marine life of all kinds there as well. Watch your bottom time, because you're going to be down at about 100 feet. Uh, bottom time should be no more than 15 or 20 minutes. It's a good dive. It's a part of history. It's one of the best aircraft conditions left from that war. If the ocean has been kind to us. The, there's a thief around here that's stolen a lot of the instruments out of there. Really? You know who he is. But what's there is they enjoy the dive. <laughs>